Hi, it's Sunday afternoon and I was earlier on just looking through my Facebook and I came up with this, this memory and it was about my, my beautiful friend Jane McGrath. Now Jane was married to my cousin or my second cousin Glenn McGrath, the famous Australian cricketer and um, Glenn's mum Bev is my cousin. And so um, it was only Margie's funeral and that was, um, she was my, my dad's sister and she's Bev's mum. And so we were at the funeral and Glenn and, and Jane had come up for the funeral and we were at the church hall afterwards having a cup of tea. And Jane came up to me and she said, excuse me, are you a Reiki master? And I said, yeah, I am. And she said, um, could you teach me some things I might be able to do to help myself? And I said, certainly. So I took her up the back of the church hall and I was teaching her how to feel energy in her hands. And then I said, oh no, this is no good. They're gonna think I'm a witch. You better come home with me. So I brought Jane home and um, we went in and we did a Reiki treatment. And then I also did an attunement on her. So she would have one Reiki attunement, which meant that she would then be able to increase her vibration and also do a little bit of Reiki on herself. And so it was a healing attunement. And so a few days later, Jane rang me and she said, look, I had this hot spot on my left hip before, and it was just this dull ache. But since you did that treatment, um, last week I've had stabbing pain in my right hip where there's a hot spot and I said oh I should have told you about that it's it's called a healing crisis and what we find is with Reiki sometimes we'll do a treatment and then the pain will get more but the reason is the healing's condensing to a shorter period of time so it's possibly going to be more intense now that doesn't happen very often but it does happen occasionally so I said to Jane oh look I'm really sorry I should have warned you you should have just messaged me and I could have sent some distance healing and I said but anyway I'll do some distance healing on you this afternoon so we left it at that and then um, that afternoon um, that afternoon I took my teddy bear out outside and I um, put the teddy on my lap and I did Reiki distance healing. So I built a bridge using the teddy bear as the surrogate. And I did um, scan the teddy bear and I thought, oh, that's bizarre because I'm feeling all hot spots also up and down the spine. And so that was at 4.30 in the afternoon. And um, the very next morning, Jane rang me and she said, uh, the pain just disappeared yesterday afternoon. I said, before you say anything, when was it? And she said, 4.30. And I said, oh, that's, that's crazy because that's the time I did this, the treatment. And she said, now I've got more pain in my back. And I said, let's just go with the same theory that it's a healing crisis. And she said, all right, I'm willing to do that because the pain's moving up and down my spine. And I told her I would then send some Reiki uh, that night and I went to bed at 11 and I told her I'd, I'd do it when I went to bed. I'd take the teddy bear with me. And she said, well, I go to bed at nine o'clock. And I said, well, just expect that you're going to feel great when you wake up in the morning. And she told me that she was going to be going to the Melbourne Cricket Ground the next day. And, um, and so um, she wouldn't be able to ring me to let me know how it went. And I went, not a problem at all. Anyway, so um, when the Wednesday came, Jane rang me and... Um, she said, uh, I woke up the next day and the pain was absolutely gone. And I didn't ring you because generally what I'll find is if I've got to go to the Melbourne Cricket Ground and we're walking all day, the pain gets so intense. So I didn't ring you because I thought, well, even though I felt great, it would probably come back. But she said it didn't come back. I had the best day ever. I just walked around all day and had no discomfort whatsoever. And that was just wonderful for me to hear that news that, um, that we'd cleared that, that discomfort in her body. So Jane and I, over the next few years, we developed this psychic attachment. So I wouldn't hear from her for months and then something would happen and I'd, I'd just, um, I'd get this inkling and I'd just ring and say, Jane, I'm just sort of check up on you, how are you? And she went, oh, how did you know I was gonna ring you? This is what happened. And I go, not a problem, I'll send some distance healing. So my uh, daughter and her son Cooper had been over in New Zealand for 12 months and they came back and I'd had a, what I would call a, um, a Reiki crystal um, resonating grid set up. So I had a teddy bear and I had crystals that were all charged with Reiki sitting on the chakra points and around the teddy bear. And they were in the dining room and every time I'd go past, I'd just put some power symbols over it. And that was great. And then one day when they came home, 
Cooper ran across and he grabbed the teddy by the left arm and he ripped it off the bench and the crystals flew everywhere. And my, my daughter was there too, but I just said, oh my God, I hope nothing's just happened to Jane. I better check the time. It's 2.30 on Saturday afternoon. So of course, um, I picked up the teddy and the crystals. And I ran into my room. I popped them on the bookshelf behind my, my, um, my door and just sort of got on with it. And funnily enough, on the, um, on the Wednesday, Jane rang me and she said, oh, I've had this terrible accident. And she apparently had been putting her son, James, on the swing, but he jumped up and he headbutted her. And she said, I don't know whether I've dislocated my shoulder, but I've been in absolute agony since. And, and um, Glenn's had the team physiotherapist working on me, but nothing's working. And I went, eh, did that happen on Saturday at 2.30 in the afternoon? And, and was it your left arm? And she said, how did you know? And I said, I think we did voodoo on you. And I told her what happened. And I said, look, while I've got you on the phone, I'll just do that distance healing now. So I did distance healing. And then she said, that is bizarre. The pain's just vanished. And now I've got pain in my right shoulder. And I said, let's do that now. So we cleared that. And this is the magic of Reiki. This is the magic of distance healing because on a quantum physics level, our thoughts can tra take our energy to wherever it needs to go. So Jane and I had this amazing relationship for several years. And then, um, then I, um, and, and I've got all these beautiful cards and things, and I'll just, because I've got them on my iPad, I'm just gonna show you very quickly. You won't be able to see too much, but if I just flick it across, here is the, I'll try not to have the reflection. Here is my crystal heart, which I have down next to me, and I'll pull that over and show you later. Here is, here are the envelopes from Jane Oops. And there is one of the beautiful cards she sent me. And that was the, the front of it. Oops. And there's another one of the beautiful cards that Jane sent me. And they were just, just joyous to have this connection with her. Merry Christmas. And that was, uh, that was most of those cards and things. Whoops, McGrath Foundation. And so, um, as I said, Jane and I had this amazing connection, but then I ended up um, getting, getting breast cancer myself. And I had to then in 2008, in the February, I went away to have radiation treatment after I'd had the lump removed. And we sort of lost this connection. And then I was away and I had this feeling, I had to ring Jane and she said, look, I knew you had your own stuff going on and I just didn't want to bother you. But what we found is that the, um, I've been on a, she said, I've been on a Remedex for three years and, um, and the cancer's changed over to a different type of cancer. And I said, you were on a Remedex. Well, what I know, being an ex-nurse, is that a Remedex, what it, its purpose is, is not to get rid of estrogen out of your system, but to stop the transfer of aromatase into estrogen. So if you've still got your ovaries, it means you're still getting about 90% of the estrogen in your system still floating around. And I said to her, shouldn't they have had you on tamoxifen because that will stop the absorption of estrogen into your bloodstream and into your body? And she said, I don't know, I've been on this. The specialist put me on it for three years. And she rang me back a couple of days later and she said, you're absolutely right. They had me on the wrong medication for three years and now the cancer has changed. And Jane said to me, look, this has been a really long battle. I've been fighting this battle for 11 years and I'm really tired. And uh, she said, I can live with the cancer. And I said, Jane, no, you can't live with the cancer. You've got to live without the cancer. And you've got to see it that way. You've got to see yourself as healthy and free from cancer. Because I know the power of the mind, being a, a clinical and five-path hypnotherapist as well. And I know whatever we think about, we bring about. And whatever we can conceive of will most likely happen. So we've got to see ourselves completely free of any disease in our bodies. We've got to clear up our traumas and be able to... Um, 
to release the chemicals out of our body that cause it in the first place. So all of our illness starts originally in the energy system, but that comes about because of our emotions. If we can't deal with them, it, it will cause a block in the flow of your energy field. And, and if you still can't deal with it, it moves into manifest as illness or injury on the body. So we've got to work with the mind in the body if we want to heal. So in that moment, when James said to me, I've had enough, I'm tired, I'm sick of fighting this battle, I knew in my heart she'd she'd come to terms with it and she was too tired and she just was ready to to let go and I knew there was nothing I could do to get her over that over that fence because she'd already made up her own mind now unfortunately um Glenn really was devastated when she passed or as you would expect and he was really angry with me for a long time because I wasn't able to save her and what I, I needed to really say to him was that healing is not something somebody does to somebody else. It's something that we do in conjunction with that person. When we're doing a healing, it's a, a partnership between us, the client and God or the universe. And if one of those things is not present, there's nothing one person can do to make that happen. So it's a, a healer is just a facilitator. The real healing comes from within that person themselves. And um, lots of factors go into that. But the amazing thing was after Jane died, we were able to kind of look back and see that the soul has its own agenda. And it means that sometimes we don't always know what the highest good is going to be for that person. And sometimes the higher good is greater than what is good for that person. It can be a, um, a universal sort of, change that can happen on the planet when one person passes and so when Jane passed away in um, 2008 and this is from her her funeral when she passed away the McGrath Foundation really got a lot of um, a lot of attention and what they've done the McGrath Foundation have put um, lots of nurses breast care nurses in the in the regional areas of, of australia and she's also inspired so many thousands of women to go and get breast checks and and do all those things they need to do to focus on their own health and so that was um that was a greater good and it doesn't doesn't seem fair but we always want to look at what is the what is something positive we can take out of every life and it's the same as when Princess Diana died, everybody was absolutely devastated. But I remember reading somewhere on a spiritual, on a spiritual perspective, her passing actually changed the world because they said um, it kind of opened the heart chakra of England. And England before she passed was very stoic and very, nobody showed emotion, but after she passed, it, it was like the whole world changed. And particularly the people in England, they became much more able to express emotions with that outpouring of, of love and peace and joy and, and all of those other emotions. And so here is the beautiful heart. It was huge. The heart that Jane McGrath gave me, and I'll always treasure this, it sits on my dressing table. The teddy bear I used for the distance healing, I later sent with all the crystals to, um, to Jane's children, and that was James and Holly, who I'd also seen for some therapy after she passed. But the world's such a small place, and I want you to realize the power of intention is amazing. And um, we don't always know what the highest good is for every person, but we do know that energy heals and energy has the capacity to change lives and at least make an improvement on the lives of those that are on this planet with us. So I hope you've enjoyed my story and um, let me know if there's anything I can ever do to help any of you because we are all on this journey together. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Namaste.